Hello, hello. Today I'm going to show you how to create a children's connect the dots activity book in Affinity Publisher that you can then go and publish and sell on the Kindle Drag publishing platform. Now, I'm bringing you this tutorial after posting my five hidden gem children's book niches that make a thousand plus dollars a month video a couple of weeks ago. And connect the dots was one of those niches and a lot of people were interested in a tutorial. So here it is. If you missed that video, there's going to be a link to it down below so you can go ahead and check it out. Now, if you don't have Affinity Publisher, you're still going to be able to follow along using the vector editing software of your choice. The basics of what I'm going to be showing you today is essentially going to be the same no matter what program you're using, as long as it is, as it is a vector editing program. A quick note, Affinity actually does have its own dedicated vector editing software called Affinity Designer, but Publisher actually has all of the functionality that we're going to need. And since we're turning this into a book at the end anyway, it actually makes the most sense to just do everything all in one program to keep things simple. Now, all you're going to need in order to follow along is some simple vector artwork, and I'm going to be grabbing mine from my favorite design resource site, Creative Fabrica and I'll give you some tips on what to look for when choosing artwork to work with in just a moment. And you're also gonna need a vector editing program such as Affinity Publisher, Affinity Designer, Adobe Illustrator, or a free program like Inkscape or the free version of Gravit Designer. I'm Rachel Harrison Sund, and I help online entrepreneurs make more money so they can live more life. If that's you, go ahead and subscribe, hit the bell, that way you'll be notified every time I put out a video every single Monday. All right, let's get going. And first things first, we are gonna need to find some artwork to use. Now, as I already mentioned, Creative Fabrica is my absolute favorite place to get stock fonts and graphics. They literally have tens of thousands of really high quality fonts and designs. And they've also got, in my opinion, the best license for low content publishers. In addition, right now they're offering their $1 all access subscription. So that means you get one month full access to all of Creative Fabrica's products just for $1 for the first month. You get access to all of the resources, no limits, and commercial use is allowed on all resources. Now this renews at just $19 a month. So that is a 35% discount compared to their standard $29 a month. You can cancel at any time, no obligations. And the best part is with their basic print on demand license, you don't have to stop selling your books if you cancel your subscription, you can keep selling them. Now, just to clarify with their full print on demand license, you can still keep selling your books after you cancel the subscription if you have made alterations to the files. So if you've just uploaded them as is, you'll have to take them down. But I really encourage you to customize any of these uh, images, graphics that you download. It's just going to make for a more valuable book and you know, you're gonna be able to customize it more toward whatever the project is that you wanna do in your brand anyway. So if you do that, like I recommend, even if you cancel, you will still be able to keep selling your books, which is awesome. And that is why Creative Fabrica, in my opinion, has the best license for low content book publishers. So when you're looking for artwork, first you wanna decide just on your general age group and then choose your artwork accordingly. You also wanna be looking for simple vector artwork. Coloring pages are actually perfect for this type of a project. So that is what we're gonna be looking for right now. It's also a good idea to look for bundles so that all of the contained artwork is in the same style. Now, if you can't find bundles for the theme that you're looking for, but you, know, you find a graphic you like, one thing you can do is just click on that artist's page and they'll likely have more artwork in that same style. What you generally don't wanna do is try to combine artwork from different artists if the styles are very different. You want your completed book to look cohesive. So you can either go to any of these graphics here, you can go straight to the POD tab if you like. And whatever theme you've decided on, you can just go ahead and type it right into the search bar. So this is all full print on demand um, usage license graphics. So again, that means you can use any of these graphics completely as is without making any alterations. 
Now, if you go to their graphics, let's just go ahead and go to coloring books for adults for a second here. Not all of these are going to be full print on demand. So all that means is, let's see, let's click into one here. Now this says commercial and full POD usage. If you come across a graphic and it just says commercial, but it does not say full POD, all that means is that you're going to have to customize that image, you know, add your own elements and make it your own. Now I have already gone ahead and chosen the graphics that I'm going to be using. So I went ahead and I found this really cute animal coloring pages for kids. So you can see commercial and full POD usage allowed. And like I said, coloring pages are really great for this project because most of the work is done for you. You've already got black and white images that have nice black outlines and no color fills on the inside. So if you do find some graphics and they're not coloring pages, black and white like this, that's fine. You'll have to do a little bit of manipulation with it. Um, and to check out how you can do that, you can check out my coloring book videos, which I've linked to down below. And that will show you the process of how you can find full color graphics and then turn them into these black and white images like this. So I will link down uh, below to, to those coloring book videos. Now, the other thing you want to look for here is you want to make sure you've got the right file type. So you're looking for EPS, AI, SVG. These are all vector files, and that is exactly what you need. So if you see SVG, EPS, that's great. That is exactly what you need. Then you just go ahead and download the file. Next, you're going to open up Affinity Publisher. So I'm just going to go ahead, keep it simple and keep my book at letter size. So that's eight and a half by 11. Eight by 10 also works really well for these books. Those are both accepted sizes for KDP. Then you can scroll down to number of pages and just add as many pages as you're going to need for your book. We will just put a random six in for now keep the pages facing or not. It doesn't really matter. That is just basically up to you for margins. I'm just going to do a three quarter inch margin all the way around. And if you click this little, um, chain link, you just have to hit it once. There we go. All right, and we don't need a bleed for this. There aren't gonna be any design elements that bleed off the edge of the page, so you can just leave that totally blank. Then just hit create, and there's our page with our margins. So let's go ahead, we'll bring in the first graphic. So page one, we will go file, place, and we'll just find our graphics, and we'll go ahead, drop it in there at the size you would like it. Okay, that looks good. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just clean up a couple of little bits of this artwork that I can see are kind of doing wonky things. So for example, I can tell that this line isn't supposed to be there. Uh, this is the cat, it's supposed to be behind the book. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I've got my move tool and I'm just gonna select that little piece. So you can see when I clicked, when I double clicked into this, you can see that all of these layers suddenly opened up here and there's an absolute ton of layers. So I can close that. Um, these are all on one layer, but these are all of the different sub layers. So anytime you click on a piece of this piece of artwork, it's going to send you straight down to that layer. So this is the piece I want to get rid of. I'm just simply going to delete it. You can also see there's some weird stuff going on around this paw. So I'm going to just go ahead and get rid of those pieces as well before we get started. Don't be afraid to really zoom in there. You can see just by importing this file this way, there's this probably when the artist created this, this should be, you know, kind of one thick continuous line. But sometimes when you import these files, some weird things happen. So. Just keep that in mind. All right, everything else I think looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close up all these bazillion layers and I'm gonna lock the file or lock the layer rather. 
And we'll just leave that for now like that. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're gonna start just creating our dots. So have a think about how complex you wanna make this and which part you'd like to remove and turn into the dots. Have a look on Amazon at some of the other uh, Connect the Dot book examples, just so you can get a sense of what other people are doing and how you think you can make yours better. Always good to do a little bit of research first. So I think for this, what I'm going to do is make the cat's head outline dots, maybe the tail as well as the portion of this book. So I'm gonna leave everything intact for now. I'm going to go over here, I'm gonna click on a new layer and that is where I'm gonna put my dots. And so we're gonna lay out all of our dots first and then we're gonna remove the stroke underneath it once we've got our dots in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my ellipse tool over here and I'm gonna give it a bright red color for now. I'm gonna change it to black after, but because we're laying these over top of these strokes, I wanna be able to see it. So where should we start? Let's start right over here. And I'm gonna do shift and drag. And just put that where I want my first dot to show up. Then I'm just gonna zoom out and see if I like the size of that dot. It looks like it could be a little bit bigger. So I wanna always hit shift when I'm dragging, otherwise you're gonna get like wonky shapes. So holding shift is going to constrain the proportions so they don't get anything wonky. All right, that looks about right. You basically, you're gonna want the dots probably about the same width as your um, stroke. So that's about right. And then I'm going to option click. And I believe that is the alt key if you're on a PC. And while you're holding that key, you're just going to drag. And then you're gonna let go. And that's how you're going to copy and paste. Just kind of a little shortcut for copying and pasting. So when you're determining, you know, how many dots you want and how close together uh, you want them to be, just use your best judgment. You know, if I wanted, obviously this is just one straight line, I could just go ahead and put the dot down here, but I think I might add a few more just to make it look, you know, a little bit more interesting. So maybe something like that. Obviously you can relocate them if you want at any point. The main thing is to just kind of keep them consistently spaced so that it doesn't look weird. I'm kind of just going, you know, pretty quickly around this. But like I said, I'll probably just come back and kind of rearrange things afterward just to make sure everything looks okay. All right, yeah, I was just wondering whether I should, you know, go up the book here or go along the tail, but I think we'll go along the tail. With curves, obviously you wanna add the dots a little bit closer together. You know, for example, if I had the dot up here, when the person drew the line, it would just kind of, you know, go straight up and cut this part off. So just keep that in mind when you're going around curves, you're gonna want the dots a little bit closer together. All right, I think I'll leave the last dot there. Then I am just gonna kind of zoom out, see if it looks like anything needs to be moved. I think we're okay. Might just wanna reposition a couple of these. But I think in general, we're good. So the next thing is going to be the numbers and I'm gonna do that on another new layer. So I'm gonna go ahead, lock this dot layer and we'll come back to that and we'll turn all the dots uh, black in a moment. Now we're gonna create a new layer for the numbers. 
So pick a font. I think a nice sans serif font works best for this. So that's our frame tool. You're just going to drag out a little frame, put the number one in it. And let's see, we'll just do something like Avenir. Now for the, the first number, I noticed a lot of these connect the dots books for the, the first number one, the font's a little bit bigger. So maybe we'll put that at 16 and bold or a black or even a heavy. Might even go up to like maybe 20 or something like that. And that way people know where to start. Then we can drag that out, same as we did with the dots, and create our number two. And I'll make that one a bit smaller. I think going down to 12 is good. You can keep it heavy if you want, or you know, take it down a little bit, a bit of a notch. Let's see what medium looks like. Control W is gonna put you into print preview, so that'll get rid of you know margins, text boxes, anything like that. Forgive me, I'm not sure what that is on a PC. Regardless, you can just go up to view and you can go into preview mode. So that's what that is right here. You can see without it, now we've got our um, text boxes show up. So I feel like that looks a little bit small. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make that a little bit bigger, probably 14 points ought to do it. Yeah, I think that's good. And we're gonna number all the dots. So what you can do is just drag them all out and go ahead and change them all afterward. Obviously that's up to you. It really doesn't matter one way or the other. All right, now I'll go ahead and actually adjust all of those numbers. Don't worry if some of the numbers overlap on the stroke because we are going to be moving that. All right, once that's done, you can kind of back out and just you know, make any uh, repositioning efforts that you think you need to make. Generally, I think this is fine. And now that we've got the numbers in place, we're going to lock that layer and we're gonna unlock that bottom layer. By the way, you can name these layers if you want. So that is our numbers layer. This is our dots layer. And obviously the bottom layer is our um, original artwork. So now we're gonna go underneath our dots and we're going to remove all of the strokes. So you're just gonna grab this move tool and just start clicking anywhere. Double click to get into it. Unlock it first. Now you might wanna just grab it and move it to make sure that you know it's not grabbing too much. And I'm, I'm gonna show you a couple of little tricks in a little uh, in a moment here because you might encounter a couple of different situations when you're actually trying to remove the artwork underneath, but we'll get to that in just a minute. For now, you just wanna kind of grab a section and if it's the correct section, just go ahead and delete it. So let's start over here. 
All right, that's super handy. That's just all coming off at once. Great, love it. Now this, like I mentioned earlier, there's wonky stuff. This, all of these paths seem to have gotten separated when I imported this, that's fine. It just might take a little bit of extra work, that's all. We're not gonna worry about that just at the moment. We'll get back to that shortly. All right. And we'll uh, fix this kind of stuff afterward as well. All right, so we can go ahead and remove that entire tail. We do want to leave this section, but we want to get rid of this section here. So zoom right in there if you have to. You can also, if you wanna see underneath, you can just turn off the dots layer, for example, just so you can see what you're doing. All right, so we actually want this entire section gone. All right, then we want this bit gone here. And we want all of that gone. All right, that got rid of the entire top of the head all in one shot. And I think that's what we're gonna get here too. Okay, so that part is done. Now we just kind of want to go in and clean up any awkward spots. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to show you before we start cleaning up the awkward bits, you might come to a situation where you actually need to remove a section, but you need to, to slice into the pathway in order to do that. So for example, if I had a couple of dots here, well, this is all one piece, so now what am I supposed to do? So honestly, the quickest way to do this is to just grab a shape, like a square or rectangle here, and just drag it out over top of where you wanna make the slice. There are other ways to do this. This is kind of the quick and dirty way that I'm gonna show you right now. And you just kinda of wanna Make it so it's perpendicular. Then select both shapes at the same time. Go up to your geometry um, toolbar here. Now, if you go up to the toolbar and you don't have this, and you probably won't right away, just go up to View, Customize Toolbar. Find the geometry one, and you can just grab it and just add it. You'll see there's some dotted lines that show up at top, and you can just add it uh, to your toolbar wherever you want. That's what I had to do. So anyways, once you've got those shapes both selected, then you're just gonna click on divide. And now you can just get rid of uh, these extraneous pieces and that that's it. So I'm gonna just undo what I've just done because I didn't actually need any dots there, but I wanted to show you how to do it because you're probably gonna run into a similar situation when you import your artwork. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead, clean up any other areas. Actually, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the dots black. So let's just zip back up to the top. And I'm gonna going to lock that layer again. Unlock the dots layer. I'm going to select all of my dots. So I've got the move tool. I'm gonna to drag over all of them. And I'm gonna click up here and the hex code for black is 000000. And I can see that there's a stroke on there for some reason, which I didn't want. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. All right, now my dots are all black. 
I'm going to lock that layer again. I'm going to unlock the artwork layer and just do a little bit of a cleanup. See if there's anything that needs adjusting. All right, there's a kind of a dot here that I think I want to just move a little bit so it looks more like a dot. Unlock my numbers, move that. All right, something weird going on here. So let's zoom in. I think the quickest fix is to just move the dot kind of over top of it and move this number a bit closer. So 14, 15, 16. Move this dot over here so that attaches properly. That'll go through here. Might want to do this actually. That gets rid of that awkwardness there. All right, I think everything else looks more or less good. Now the dot to dot portion is looking good. That part is done. And like I mentioned earlier, it's always good to try and customize these pages as much as you can. So, you know, maybe we want to, I don't know, go into the sun, maybe, I don't know, add some eyeballs or something. You know, maybe you want to do a few more customizations. So oh, that looks super creepy. Anyways, you get the idea. You know, I could maybe move these stars around a little bit or I could add a couple of more stars. You know, maybe drag a couple more out here. You know, the main thing is you just wanna make it your own as much as possible. And then once you've made some customizations, you can just go ahead over to the side panel here, click add page and you know, you can add as many pages as you want to your dot to dot and you'll just get cracking on the next one here. Now, once you've done all of your pages, you're going to probably want um, to add a page at the beginning. Let's add a page before. You can also just reorganize these pages here. So you might want some sort of a title page on the front here. So hopefully you'll have something a little bit more interesting than what I've just put there. Uh, but we're going for a kid's book, so maybe we'll do something, you know, a little bit kind of childlike here. And I definitely recommend creating a little bit more of a, you know, dynamic um, title page here than what I've got. And then you're going to want to put your copyright information. So that's option G on a Mac. I'm not sure what it is on a PC, so you'll have to check that out. that in whatever font you'd like and you can add your contact information now I don't know where my margins went And then you can add in your logo. That's usually pretty much all I do on the copyright page. And then obviously you're going to want more than one page in your Connect the Dots book. When your book's complete, you're going to go to File, Export, 
export PDF for print. You can check off preview export when complete, so you can take a look at it. And you want to make sure that all pages is clicked. Then you'll hit export. We'll just save that in there. And there we go. This is our print ready. Well, it would be print ready if I had more than one page in here, but you get the idea. One page at least, which looks pretty darn cute. Now for the cover of this book, you're going to need a completely separate file to upload to KDP. I'm not going to do that in this video, but I'm going to link down to a couple videos below, which are all about how to create a book cover in Affinity Publisher. So go ahead, check out those tutorials that will help you set up your cover and you'll be good to go. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and have some fun messing around and creating your own dot to dot book. If the idea of selling books like these is new to you and you'd like to learn more, download my free guide, three steps to publishing your first low content book in less than a day down in the description below. You can also go ahead and join my free Facebook group, Low Content Profits, also linked to down below. If you want to learn about more lucrative children's book niches, check out my five hidden gem children's book niches that make a thousand plus dollars a month video right here. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.